Now to uh, Charlie Sheen cashing in on the crazy. First, he files a whopping $100 million lawsuit against Warner Brothers and his longtime producer Chuck Lorre, uh, the guy he insulted and called uh, uh, Chaim Levine. Uh, we'll give you our best up and down appraisal of that. And now Charlie's got an internet home for rants like this one. Dog speed, my good soldiers. I gave you my word. This warlock bats 1,000%. You know by now my promises are golden. Hashtag fastball. I am bringing my violent torpedo of truth. Defeat is not an option show out to you in the battlefield. If you're winning, I'll see you there. Trolls need not apply. You all suffer from Sheenus envy. Buy your ticket, take the ride, and the ride will take you. <sighs> Surge forward, Sheen's cadres. Ignition, liftoff, bye. Now he's very funny and crazy, and that's my non-medical opinion, but to give us their best estimates on Charlie's legal and mental health are in Boston tonight from the Fox News Medical A-Team, Dr. Keith Ablo joins us, while in L.A., a top entertainment lawyer, in fact, a man who has represented Charlie's dad, Martin Sheen, in his contract negotiations and other vital legal matters, Barry Langberg uh, joins us, saying that Charlie has a shot to win millions. You mean that? Uh, you you, you mean that, Barry? Yeah, I think that uh, he does. I mean, we don't know all the facts, but in some of these cases, you really don't know what, what happened entirely. Of course, Charlie's behavior has been a little strange, but the, uh, the studio has acted a little bit strangely, too. The publication of that letter is a very strange thing for a studio to do. And in past cases, we've seen things that have happened behind the scenes that we don't really uh, know about right now. I have the $100 million lawsuit in my hand here, Barry. Now, uh, I know that uh, the number that you attach uh, to these, uh, the, the, these litigation uh, matters is uh, just a creation, but it's certainly there to attract our attention. What do you think? I think the whole lawsuit is there to attract your attention. The complaint is a long complaint, which is more of a public relations piece than anything else, and the number is part of that public relations piece. Uh, let me stand by, Barry. Uh, Dr. Ablo, he's got two million followers on Twitter. For a crazy man, it seems like uh, he knows how to attract a crowd. Well, look, uh, in these days of everything being sterilized and the Internet ruling and Facebook being taken for real life, uh, he gives people a raw dose of his reality. But look, underneath all that, Geraldo, what we've got is a guy who's violent toward women, uh, who tells people it's okay to use cocaine, who believes, he says, that if you use seven grams of it, which is uh, not like any weekend uh, my, my patients describe, thankfully, uh, that your heart can't suffer when we know you can die. This guy's a big problem, public health enemy number one, and people should take it very seriously because he's up to no good. All right, we're going to have much more on Charlie Sheen. You guys stand by, if you, if you will. Uh, Dr. Ablo also says that he would have Charlie committed were he his client is that possible? We'll discuss that and other matters after this. I woke up, I watched the Ustream, eight and a half minutes. Thank you for that one. It was brilliant. Um, listen, all, the, all, all your tweets are up. They're brilliant, as usual. Well, hello, duh. Uh, yeah, I like, I like the show. I'm glad, I'm glad you went solo. You love and life, dude? Well, I mean, what's not to love? It's my life. Winning. <laughs> and life's loving you. I support anything Charlie has to say. And other people don't know Charlie the way that I do. That's one of the goddesses. Uh, reading from the lawsuit, the $100 million lawsuit, defendant Chuck Lorre, one of the richest men in television who is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, believes himself to be so wealthy and powerful that he can unilaterally decide to take money away from the dedicated cast and crew of the popular television series Two and a Half Men in order to serve his own ego and self-interest and make the star of the series, uh, the series the scapegoat for Lorre's own conduct. Uh, you know, uh, Barry Langberg, uh, Marty Singer is the lawyer. He's a hell of a lawyer, a great lawyer. But this sounds more personal than business. I think it often turns out to be more personal than business. The, remember, there's, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars involved in this project. And uh, we've seen in the past in the Valerie Harper case is another example of someone getting fired from a show. It turns out that the thing that tips the scale is personal, and it's very, it seems like this one is very, very personal. 
and uh, Chuck Lorre has some certain amount of power at the studio and at the network. And if he's uh, perturbed with Charlie, uh, to say the least, he can do what basically do what he wants. And again, the, what you just read is not normally found in a legal complaint. Really, it is it's a, a PR piece. It is. It's uh, you know some creative writing there, uh, Dr. Ablo. I, I know you've said publicly that you'd have Charlie committed if it was up to you. Uh, answer whether you still believe that. And secondly, and perhaps more uh, immediately, I have never known anyone using that much crack, uh, smoking that much coke, to cure themselves. What say you? Uh, look, first of all, on the commitment issue, it's just arithmetic, Geraldo. Uh, any psychiatrist will tell you, if you're not as seduced by this man's fame, if you threaten to behead a woman, uh, which uh, has been alleged in court and uh, a restraining order was granted to his ex-wife for that reason, if you have a history of violence toward women while using drugs, admittedly he has said that this is the case, and if you then say, I don't believe that using seven grams of cocaine can be bad for me. That shows you're incompetent. You go right to the ER. You don't pass go. You don't collect $200 or seven grams of cocaine. You go right to the ER and you get committed. That's what a doctor in California should have done for him. Okay, but what and about yes, my question about the... yes, I would do it in the... New York or Massachusetts. Okay, what about can he cure himself? Or is it once a junkie, always a junkie? Outdoor wins. I don't know his diagnosis. I assume it's related to drugs. Um, he may have more than one diagnosis. Uh, there are people who put drugs down. The trouble is they tend to put them, pick them back up. Why? They haven't addressed the underlying reasons why they use drugs in the first place. And no amount of fame, no one-man tour is going to cure a guy who was using crack cocaine or in, uh, sniffing cocaine at that level for that long. Dr. Keith Ablo, uh, Attorney Barry Langberg, thank you very much, gentlemen.